Chapter 2 with Sarah. Hello there here and we are back with the Cardinal Park case. Oh yes, I'm so excited. I'm I'm really excited about the first chapter and now we are in the second chapter. I'm just so excited to continue playing this game because of the story is cool. After calling the police, the corpse is taken to the lab in your office. Meanwhile, divers have managed to find other items of interest that could be connected to this case. You don't know why, but this corpse looks oddly familiar to you. And the fact, and that fact has been driving you insane. You just want about to give some evidence of, of who this is. Mr. Cypress, could you come over here for a second? Have you idea the body yet? Is there, is there any way that we can find out who she is? You attended Libretto University, right? This can be good. Yes, I do attend Libretto University. I would hand you the first one to see. You don't like the fact that someone so young was murdered. You shift through the purse with your gloved hands, handling, handling it gently. You come across a wallet, exactly 123 inside of it. No robber would pass up that much money. Inside of the wallet, you come across a photograph, presumably of the girl's parents. Both of her parents have faces that you can only describe as sweet. They do not look like the kind of people who would be target for murders. They are going to be in pieces when they find out. You think to yourself as you imagine how the scene will play out. Before your imagination gets to carry it away, something catches your eye. The logo for Libretta University. Her Libretta University ID. You pull the card out and... No fucking way. Emma Greenwood, you're shaking up. Your throat is beginning to close in. You don't even feel as if you're actually experiencing this. You feel like you're watching some horrible twist movie play out. Emma was... It's the girl you were just speaking to a couple of hours ago. You told her that you'd be there for her. And look at her now. It's no wonder that her corpse... No. The corpse appears so familiar to you. Greenwood? That's a name that we have heard back then in the graveyard. Interesting. You don't even realize that you're shaking as you hold her idea. Hey, you okay? You nod your head in silence. The good thing about that is the fact that you still have an easier... You still ha have an easier time solving this one. What makes you assume that this will be easier? The fact that we attend the same university. Yeah, you'll have an easier time getting information about her. You restrain yourself from sobbing on the spot. You can let her see that. Fine, you do have a point. I should be able to gather more information about um, the victim. Anyways, back to report. She exclaims jovially acting as though she hasn't just performed a bunch of tests on a murdered college student. Honestly, I've got a clue what exactly killed her. That's concerning. You see, there's a lot of things that could have killed her. It's almost kind of difficult just how throughout through, through oh, the killer was. This girl was beaten, stabbed, stabbed 43 times, burned in several places, with fat bleach, and obviously thrown in the Cardinal River. In addition, the perpetrator tried to sew her body apart. You feel like you're going to vomit just thinking about the order in which this tor torture play out. I can't tell if the killer decided to beat a dead horse or not. Have you found any sort of DNA on the corpse? Some of the fingernails were torn off. Maybe they tried to get to scratch the perpetrator. We're gonna do that in an hour or so. We've gotta get the tech ready, the new cutting edge stuff. Right. Look it, you look a lot paler than usual. You ought to get some rest in the office. You want to retort with something snarky, especially since she called you kid. Still, you can deny that she meant well. Oh, we just moved. Kid, go and rest in the office, okay? Then assemble, best not to touch them. Touch, touch. 
Eh, my what the what? A bunch of forensic tools. How about stamina making this lab a bit more homey? <laughs> you can watch you do that, but you don't know anything that that the plastic glyphs cut it. An empty table used for the corpse. Empty table we use for the corpse again. Her, the corpse lies under this blanket. For some reason, you had the idea of a corpse being laid to rest in a cold, sterile place like this land. Indeed. Oh. That's. What the fuck? Anyway, let's see what we can explore here. What's wrong with you? What exactly do you mean? You look like, you, like you've seen a ghost. I mean, I did just see the corpse of someone I knew. How did they die? And don't give me any of that stabbing bullshit. That's just so, that's just so normal for murders. What, what do you mean? Didn't exactly see how they could be anything normal about a literal murder. Yeah. I mean, yeah, pr pretty normal, I guess, in this universe. A bunch of case files that you're gonna go over once you solve this case. A bunch of law books. Picture. You see the see it attempting to process the facts that Emma's dead. Yeah, that's just going about as well as you could expect. If it wa if I wasn't such a fool, she'd be a life right. Maybe if I didn't waste my time arguing with that stupid cock, I could have gotten the to the scene sooner, right? You continue bargaining in your mind over and over again, wondering if Emma would be alive if you had done anything differently. This case is different from many of the ones you've covered in the past. In those cases, you could only intervene when it, it, it was impossible to actually save anyone. You still assign yourself the blame for not saving the poor victim, but at least you know that it made no sense to blame yourself. So eventually you'll be able to push that guilt to the back of your mind. This case, on the other hand, hits a little too close to home for comfort. You bury your face in your arms. You know that everyone else will realize that you're crying like a little wuss you are. Oh, that, it's fine. You can cry like, <laughs> like a little wuss you are, but it's fine. It, crying is fine. It's part of our nature. Uh, No, it's part... It's not... Maybe it's not part of our nature. Rather, I would rather say it's okay to cry. But at least you have the dignity to try and hide your ugly, sobbing face. No one else should have been affected by your stupid emotions. Hey, what's the matter? Would I thought you were spun in a barbering tongue? This girl, this girl is dead because of me. Maybe if I wasn't such a fucking jackass, I would have realized that leaving her alone was a recipe for disaster. So, a girl died before you could kiss her? What? What? Huh? You quickly whip your tears with the sleeve of your sweater and get up to be greeted with. Are you fucking kidding me? What the hell are you doing here? Ah, this is exactly what you need. You need, the, you need the dislease you to come into the office and listen to you have a breakdown over the death of the girl that he harassed. Great, just absolutely positive, positively super calif <laughs> califragilistic. Califragilistic. Okay. Califragil califragilistic. Expel califragilistic expelliadocious. Now you're not usually one for throwing punches and kick it. Case. Right now, you really want to make an exception to your anti-violence moral code. <laughs> but no, you have to play nice. Oh, you miss me? No, Edward. I, I, I will end you. You then hiss under your breath. What do I look like to you, your dog? Jeez, relax, man. Don't tell me relax, man, alright. Aren't you used to cars or something? Not a corpse of people I knew. Our corpses of girls sealed off. Quit projecting your romantic feelings for her and me. You know damn well that you're losing your cool and he's having a blast watching your descent. Fine, just trying to help. How? You're doing everything but helping just by being here. 
I am helping. I just got called to help the ID girl. The girl. I already ID her. Haven't you heard of having multiple people like her about her story? Yeah, I think so, Mr. Famous Detective. For some very not obvious reason, you hate the idea of the sleazy, annoying Edward Cox being the same room as Emma's, the victim's corpse. Well, I was in the room with him. He wouldn't try anything with her in there, right? I I don't know. Edward, you're scary, you know. Besides, I know that he's immature, but he'll at least take over there seriously, right? No. Screw me for oblivion, Cox. <laughs> The music. Let's go. You march in the lab hoping to prevent a tragedy. How about what happened? Did he hurt you? Are you. What the hell? Well, at least you know, you know now that your initial hunch was right. Hey man, this isn't what it looks like. You see, Emma pro pro what? promised me a kiss and. With the way that you're rubbing your hands up and down her body, I don't think that you just gave her a kiss, you degenerate. <laughs> degenerate? Me? You be about a pair of handcuffs ignoring Edward's resistance. Oh, Oliver. I didn't know that you were into me. Are you okay? <laughs> you know, my rating from Edward was zero back then. It was like around low, like mid. And then, after this, it goes high, because the, he, he's such a fuck up character, it's comical, okay? Do you think that this is a joke? You, Edward fucking Cox. Oh, I forget that. Oh, no wonder. I forget that I need to charge my laptop this way. Are under arrest, and before you could ask for what? It's for tampering with evidence, and if I could, I'd, I, I'd add on necrophilia. You've got a right to remain silent, frankly, it will benefit both of us. You arrest Edward Sean's ass and put him in the police custody. Your victory against Edward Co Cox during solo as you arrested in DNA found an image now is gonna be useless. How about before that man came here, did you manage to get any DNA images? The kid, the kid went for her right before we were about to get the DNA. But it's not like it would matter. They then the DNA would have been swept away while it was under the ice, right? I was hoping that there'd be a chance of DNA working at least. Sigh. It's fine, what good detective used DNA as a crutch, correct? Well, actually, there's a lot of cold cases that have been solved with the help of DNA, so... Ugh. Not helping about... Not ha not at all. Uh, you know what? I, I think I'll stop now. Don't worry about it, you're not to blame for this predicament. Technically, I am to blame. I didn't think anything of it when he went to the lab. To be fair, so though, we did call him in to ID the victim. The victim and him both go to... Go to where? Okay. Liberato University. Yeah. I have reason to believe that Cox might be su a suspect in this case. Well, just like all the other cases, narrow down the suspect list, alright? Try to find every su possible suspect. And if you can't find any reasonable suspect, just find a maniac who did it. Well, first off, do we have any clue of where um, the victim was dumped from? That's a good starting point. Although we don't have many detectives right now to survey the area. Most of the other detectives have already clocked out for the holidays and I don't think that they care very much about this case. Ooh, interesting. So I guess that, that we are gonna be the main people who are working on this. In that case, I better get going right now. We don't want to stay out in Colonel Park for too long. Whoa, 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 slow down. Isn't it way past your bedtime, kid? I don't have a bedtime or anything of the sort. I'm an adult for crying out loud. Are you sure that's a good idea to go out now of all times? You know, the most likely time for serial killers to be out and about. If I do a come across a serial killer, then I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll be able to arrest the serial killer, and I'll find where Emma's body was dumped from. Okay, but you're ignoring the fact that the serial killer killed... I don't know. Kill you? Nah. Serial serial killer couldn't kill you if you say no, okay? It's fine. The sooner I find a dumping ground, the better. It's supposed to be snow tonight, right? So the dumping area would end up buried tomorrow. 
Uh, okay, so you're gonna put yourself in danger to make it slightly easier to find the damn area, got it. I'll be fine. Bye, Olifar! I'll get a pharmacy kit ready for your corpse. <laughs> okay, bye. Also, I was intending to explore around a little bit, so yeah, let's save here and go back. On top of the shelf sits an empty box for some reason. Your coworkers have said that the box had characters the room. Desk with paper and coffee on the hand. You remember that another coworker sat here? Marisa Fontaine was her name, you think? She was in a detective, rather she was working in technology. A few months ago, she went on summer vacation and she hasn't been back. But wait, Marisa? No, that's an... Is that the name of the Aquatic Grave character? Let me check. Okay, so her name is indeed Marisa, the character from Aquatic Grave. That's cool, but I don't know if we all work in the same place or anything. A simple space heater, but that's really cool. You find yourself in the office so often that you decide to make it a bit cosier here. Wait, so is the boss that... That's the boss that takes your... No, wait, actually, does your to is your toxic girlfriend around here with dating your boss? No, I remember. Oh god, no. Yeah, the last one is meant to be a bit peculiar. To say at least, he straight up introduced himself as Claw. You believe that he's just an alias, and that he's actually some undercover agent or something. In addition, many of his be behavior are rather petty, to put it lightly. For instance, right now, he's watching the clock ticking almost like a cat. Weirdly enough, he seems absolutely involved, enveloped by the clock's ticking. He decided to snap him out of the hypnosis. Excuse me. Ah, clock. Jeez! Oh, it's just you. You didn't notice me come in. Ah, huh, I was just busy talking to my grandfather. The clock. <laughs> okay. Your grandfather? You said to say asking questions, clearly this man is a secret agent. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 to totally, 100%. The grandfather clock. It doesn't seem to be displaying the right time. Hello, can you... Yeah, okay, thank you. Stop. Why am I keep getting here? Nope, can you leave just yet? Okay, that's all we have here. Let's go forward, shall we? Yeah, like I said about Edward, initially I thought... Come on, you've got to get to the Cardinal Park. Edward was like a fuck... Just a... Yeah, Edward was like a low tier character for me, like, uh, okay, you, this guy. But after this, this is just so com comically fucked up that, alright, he's good. This is the desk you should find yourself sitting at when working in cases. You find yourself spending so much time here that you decide to make it tinsy tinsy bit cozier by putting up a photo of your father. Many of your co workers like to point out how similar you look to him. Mothers also do the same thing. The only difference between you and father are your eyes, and potentially how messy your hair is compared to him. Father, huh? Interesting. Mother. Father. Nothing new, apparently. Oh. He looks to be sleeping, I better not disturb him. Boo! <laughs> Jump scare. Ah, the office. Oh, we can enter again, I love it. Arnie is supposed to be not going to the university right now. Cars gonna freak you out, same thing. This cat is quite persistent in saying in this place, huh? Maybe the answer is there, like this is the closest to you, you get to the crime scene. Moon builds has crossed right now. Unless you want to rob the place, there's no reason to go in there. Not going home to mother now, you've got a case to cry. Ooh, I love the snow footstep, that's so cool. You begin walking through the forest, hoping that nothing else fucks this inv investigation up. That's a very cool boot. You really should be scared shitless right now, but you are. There's something eerily calm about being outside late at night with no one person, at least you're pretty sure that you're not. You're the only one out here. After some more boring walk, you come across a fork in a path. I've heard it. There's a point where every worm turn will just take you back to the place you started off. 
Problem is that I bet that some people have gotten so lost that they forget where they even started off from. They're beginning to slightly regret disobeying Abbott. But you also know that. I can just give up on this case or this investigation. I'll stay here till dawn if necessary. There has to be some way to get through the forest without driving myself insane. Oh look, a sign! With its arrow torn off. <laughs> who did who did this? Who make the arrow point in each direction? This sign boss has one job. Had one job. I can exactly blame it if someone else tore the arrow off. You're barely able to make out what the plague says in the darkness. It reads, if you seek the proper path, heal your health up. Huh? Front? R left? I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, we can go through rocks. That's amazing. Wait, is it lagging? It, it is lagging. BRB. Okay, it's still a bit laggy, but I think this is just a resource-heavy ass place. Look up, you mean follow the red? This one does look kinda red. This one, a little bit darker. You can enter trading to the forest. But you end up right back where you started. I think that was the right path. Uh huh. A game. That was on the right path. How many times you can do this? Choo. They came out of here and investigate, not to go on little nature high. <laughs> You're starting to get angry. Oh, I think that's all. Let's go. Red, huh? That's a clue. Look up. Oh, so snow! Hello, snowman. A cute snowman. For snow to be back like this, it's probably much wetter than snow on the ground. Oh, that- wait, that's the right direction? Oh, the top one, I see. So, oh, okay, there, so there's gray, dark gray, and red. Can I pick up the axe? An axe stuck to a tree stone. You've got no clue who could be chopping trees here. But it's pretty convenient, since now you'll be able to chop those slugs up. Here's what little thing you have to pull the axe out. Press enter when the pointer is red? Oh shit. You finally manage to get the axe out through your arms when we paint a security axe. Got X. They begin chopping up the log. Spam Q to absolutely destroy this log. <laughs> I love that. After hacking away the log, it finally breaks, clearing the way for you. Oh, okay, that's very far. This one then. I wonder what happened if we destroy all the locks. We are just jumping all the locks. Who left these locks in the fucking park? God damn, at least we have enough winter boots now. Oh, rock. Oh, fire. Shit, how did that wood catch fire? I thought you're a pretty tall guy, you can climb over this rock formation. Maybe if you get some new help, you'll be able to get past this. Parts now. Weather? I think I've got an idea. What if we fail, though? Oh, okay, I kinda want to try that now. You decided that the best course of action was to rip the poor snowman head off. Get a snowman head! No! Wait, the, the way there's two of them now. Huh? There, what? Where do you all come from? Oh, 
Huh? Okay, that's 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 weird. That's hella weird. Poor hella snowman. Four of them. X. Turn this around. You look like a serial killer. Okay, wait. Safe because I want to go back a little bit and see what it's all about. A large log. You can climb over this. Oh, okay, so that's just all. Everything. Huh. Okay then. Oh wait, what if you fail? Then we try that again. That's hilarious. So yeah, what's going on? I think it would be way better if like they added like a scaling option. So like the whole background doesn't show black part. Yeah, you can do that, I think. Po possibly. Anyway, what if you just run through? You're not crazy enough to walk through a little fire, are you? J nope. Okay then. So, snowman. How many snowmans can we get? Oh. Oh, was it a bug? Oh, I love that bug. Okay then. There wasn't supposed to be multiple snow. <laughs> there wasn't supposed to be multiple snowmen apparently. This is someone had put out a fire. Oh, we have to be tactical about it. You don't because you have to walk. Uh huh. Well, how do we get more snowmen here? Uh What? Hello, am I stuck now? Oh wait, I'm stuck there actually. Hello? The game froze? What the hell? Okay then. Okay, I decided to go with this road instead because Huh. You know. Also how did it catch on fire? Any more? Yes, there is. What the hell? How many? How many fucking snowmen are there? And where did they tur turn out from? What the hell? Oh, there's more? Oh my god, I'm enjoying myself right now. <laughs> what the hell? Is there a limit to snowman? Yeah, you know what? I gave up. Maybe there is a limit or something, but we don't know. I got wooden plank. Oh, which we can use to go here, huh? Right? You prop the wooden planks up against the rock. Use the wooden plank. You climb on the wooden plank and across the rock formation. I think this is the wrong path now. You can enter through the forest. Fucking hell, that's a bait. That's such a silly bait, you know, that's cool. Like, people would expect- Oh, uh, so the plank, we use it for the rock, but then you see that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Something that's right. Because the sign says, go this way. You're gonna walk through the forest, making sure to keep a fast pace. I don't know if we were supposed to go- Back and grab stuff, but interesting. 
Are you stupid? I mean, I rest very, very clearly there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Are you sure? That looks like, you know, uh, bolognese sauce. Italian. This seems to be the place you're looking for. The blood in the hole in the ice should make that pretty damn obvious. A chill climbs up your spine as you recognize that the clothing on the ground is a Moonbill's uniform. Upon looking inside of the uniform, you find a tag that confirms your suspicion that this is a mass uniform. So this is the, this is it then. The area Emma was dumped from. You begin snapping photos of the scene and taking notes about it, making sure to be a through, a through, as true as possible. Just as you're getting into it, however, you notice a reflection in the camera lens that isn't yours. Oh no. On appearance, seeing you turn around and put your right hand in your coat pocket, have a strained hand. You're ready, you're shaking body to come face to face with the killer. However. Mother? Ah, oh, yeah, I was guessing that. That's cool. Her short, illustrious stature contradicts the area around her. Clearly, she's not happy with you. Mother, what on earth are you doing here? I shall be asking you that question. What are you doing with that burst of uniform? You didn't come out here to date behind my back, did you? No, of course not. I'm working on the case right now. Gosh, not the dating stuff again. You get why she be so against you dating after all. That will distract you from what really matters. But you don't get why whenever you so much as breathe behind her back, that's the first thing her mind jumps to. Ali, do promise me, promise me nothing to you. You said you come home and then have you all to myself. What happened to that promise? Why are you still out here? This case just landed on me today and since there's, there's almost no one at the office, I have to solve it. And what's the rest in solving this case? Did someone important die or did you take personal interest? Howard scared your mind. You can shake the feeling that she knows the letter option is true. D didn't you see the blot right behind? The victim is no, no one of importance. So why are you out here at 2 in the morning? You never say it out this late and, and it's wetter. This is how, how I this is how I usually work and I'm perfectly fine with it. Now why are you out here? It's dangerous to be out here alone at this hour. Out here alone at this hour. I'm here because of you. I'm here to take you back home. Mother, I'm an adult. And at that, an adult on the job. I have to say and finish up my notes. You've got a camera for a reason, right? Just take some pictures and come home. It's not for my sake, then your sake. If not for my sake. How do you respond? Ooh, spicy. I'll return home for sign. Fine, I'll return home with you. You look around trying to make sure that there isn't, isn't anything else important. You then step as many photos as you can, all under his mother's watchful gaze. Then the two of you return home. Mother, why, why are you not reacting to the crime scene? Be clear. After you have a long night of investigating, you should probably get some rest. If you could, you sleep next to the fireplace. Unfortunately, you're such a chaotic sleeper that you probably sit. What? Set yourself on. Oh, that's ST instead of set. Yourself on fire by accident. You know. You know, no one in this household is a murderous psychopath. Huh, I wonder. I actually wonder about that now. Sweetie, you really should be getting to bed right now. Or will you rather spend your time with me? No, you're right, I really should be going to bed. Okay then. Now where do you think you're going? You'll just get back home and know you want to go back out. Mm hmm The lighting, hmm.
A phone number. Where do we where will we get a phone number? Does Marisa have a phone number? Interesting if she does. Like it's a other game type of thing. We can call Marisa's from the other game. You fall asleep very quickly within less than an hour then. Usually you have much more trouble falling falling staying asleep. After such an exhausting day, you're in the rest. Where is he? Sai. Hi, Mom. What are you doing? Waiting. Will you make cookies together? I think it's really fun. Fine. Fine. Can that join us? It's more fun when we all of us. I'll let you know the answer to that question. I was waiting for your father to come home. So he's working on detective stuff? Yes, that's why he's not here with you and me. Do you know the stuff he's working on? It's fun hearing about that. Gosh, you only like hearing the glamour stuff about saving people. But he never tells you about the stuff that really matters. What is it? Find anyone me to tell you about the case he's working on? Yes, please. Do you remember Miss Barrett? Yes, that kind lady who comes out to, over to read with me. She hasn't been here in a while. Mother's voice takes on a slightly agitated tone. And do you know why she hasn't been here? She is dead. M mother? She just had to go and get herself killed. And do you want to know what she's doing right now? Dead people can still do things to those alive. Horrible, awful things. That bitch is taking father away from me. She tried to do it when she was alive and she's doing it again. Uh-huh. She's why father isn't here at home with us. Because she went and got herself beaten, sapped, burned, fat bleached, and thrown into Cardinal River. Same thing. The better she got herself killed like that and proposed, the more of a spectacle she makes out of it, the more Asher will stay away from us. Why will someone kill someone like Miss Barrett? She was so nice to us. This world is a shitty place. But the one saving grace is karma. You might have thought that Miss Barrett was under something of murder, but I think that karma just got off to her. No. Oh. Good morning, Oliver Cypress. The day that awaits you is, is another day of detective stuff. You get out of bed and come your fluffy hair with your fingers. It's been a while since I had a dream. Dreams aren't important right now, I need to figure out how I'm going to carry out this investigation. Maybe I should start by finding out where Emma lives. Her parents should be the first people to know about her. Wait, I thought... Huh. So what if you resist? Okay, let's resist the same. What do you mean? I'm fine. I'm fine right now. Aha, uh -huh, really now? Perhaps she does have point. Your pale skin, blue lips, and chicken body aren't exactly the best example of being fine. You'll go around trying to make sure that there, there isn't anything else important. You don't step as a man who photos out as you can all under Mother Watchful gaze. All of a sudden, as you walk with her back home. Oh, same thing. Huh. Go to bed. I don't feel like spending time with you. That's different. So this is two different paths? What is happening? Okay, so take note that both 13 and 14 are important. Okay, let's go back to Mother's Road first. And then we continue. I don't sleep. Oh, same thing. Oh. Oh. 
Say bye to mother before leaving. Hell yeah, hell no. You generally swear in her ear. Bye mother, I'll be home soon. Best not to whisper too much to her, wouldn't want to wake her up and stress her out. Interesting. Why cannot we access the bathroom? This is so stupid. I'm crying and shaking. Coffee? Oh, huh, okay. You can barely make out the slit of the front door key in the fire. Unless you want to burn your arms to crepes, you need to put the a fire out. Front door key? Strange, the door is locked. Goodness, has mother locked the door again? One we can spot her since has the habit of locking the front door with a padlock. It's a time to prevent you from working on cases. Even how urgent this case is, you should try and find the front door key. So, coffee? An empty coffee cup. You could probably put water in here or something. Get an empty coffee cup. Psych! No coffee for you! Aha! You try to sing on a filled empty coffee cup with water. Got a coffee cup with water. A very empty symbol sing a sing that hasn't been used to clean the blood out of a night. Interesting. Use the coffee cup with water to put out the fire. You got front door key. You unlock the door with key. Use the front door key. Where do you wish to go? There's two Why are there so many options here? Cobalt Street? Wait, did we go to the graveyard instead? How about this? Fancy! Greenwood like Emma! Get flowers! Get flowers. How am I supposed to know that I need to pick up flowers? Wait, we can just go around? That's amazing. There's some red li lily bell rose of flower back to soon. That of an allergic reaction to roses. <laughs> I'm sorry. And at the foot of the tombstone is a bouquet of roses. Yay! How about street? I love this. I love this lot. Wow, that's amazing. Why is it so laggy? Is it because of the fog? Come to think of it, maybe if I provide this cat with a box, it will get out of the way. Oh. You, you don't need to go to Karen Park right now. We said there's a couple of other detectives doing a, a questionable job at the surfing area. Nothing new here. Unless there is, and I just miss it. Nope. Oh, empty box! How do we reach that? No? Are you not tall enough? Okay then. Huh. 
Oh. Hey, kid, what do you need? Do you have any information on the victim's address? I'm going to inform her parents of her death. Alright, let me just get the papers out. Here you go. Abba hands you a sheet of paper with Emma just printed on it. Got Emma's address. Thank you, Abba. I should probably head back home now. I need to change into something more suitable for making the news. Okay, that's rather simple. Mm-hmm, changing clothes. So sleeping, good. He changes into something a little bit more suitable for bringing news up there. Alright, this outfit should be fine. Still sleeping? Yes, yeah, still sleeping. Interesting. The Greenwood Home. You all have the address that Abbott gave you. For better or for worse, the Greenwood doesn't live too far from, away from your home. Still, though, you have to walk quite a good distance through the cold, empty streets. You take your sweet time with walking there, for body feeling forcing your head down. You know that this is almost always the worst part of carrying out an, an, an investigation. Given how are you already felt about and say about Emma's death, you figured that it would be best to get this out of the way. Finally, you reach the Greenwood home. Hello, is anyone home? Huh, seems as though there's no one home. That comes out of your mouth much more blissful than you want. Usually, you'd be slightly annoyed if the victim family wasn't present. I guess that's just like everything else about this case, it's different from what you're used to. Yes? Ah, uh, look as though as you're in getting away from the incoming parents. Hello, are you, um, Miss Greenwood? Yes, and you are? Oliver Cypress. I'm here because I have to tell you something about your daughter. Why are you surprised about Oliver Cypress' name? The, mo the moment before you stand speechless. Oh my gosh! Uh-huh. You're the sweet boy my baby has been telling me about. W what Oh, hell no. Poor woman has her hopes up so high and you're gonna absolutely destroy them like a scumbag you are. You found my daughter, right? She told me what about what a great, great detective you are. Um... Oh, no. Technically, you did find her daughter. Oh, yeah, technically. However, you don't know if she'd be too happy about hearing th that you found her dead instead of lying. Oh, please do come in. I'll get I'll get you some coffee. Thank you for the offer, but the coffee is really not necessary. Miss Greenwood escorts you inside the little home. Please do make yourself at home. Thank you. Well, then just stand there, tell her that her kid is dead, and then expect her to tell you everything about Emma. Where's the coffee spilled? Oh. On top of her breast, see two photos, one of Emma and one of a man. It looks like the man from the photo you found in Emma's wallet. It'll be rude to snoop around. The search is the upper floor of the house. He came here to chat with Miss Greenwood, not stop around. Hello? So, Miss Greenwood, this is quite a nice house. Ah, uh, thank you, though it has been a while since I've had the double place. Although it could prevent perceive as rude to ask why, you don't you need as much information as you can get. Oh, why is that? Well, ever since my husband's funeral, I've just been languishing around. Oh no, how do we tell you? My condolences. Don't be sorry, I'm already over it. Judging by her dark clothing and rainy mascara, you figure that this funeral happened quite recently. You hardly doubt that she's over it in spite of her upbeat mood. How am I going to tell her? She's already dealing with another person's death. Now you said that you were here because of Emma, right? Yes, I'm here to speak with you about her. Are you gonna marry her? 
marry her. Yes, that's what you're here with an Emma. That's why you're here with an Emma. You're going to ask me for my blessing, right? That is going to rather quickly. No, I'm here because... Oh... Uh... There's something important that I need to tell you. There's something more than I need to tell you. We can about the question of her, aren't you? And then, and then, I'll give Emma the dress I married her father in. No. Oh, uh, and maybe. Look, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're getting off topic. But it's really important that you speak about a wedding. You're quite serious about this, aren't you? I know it might sound silly to you, but it's a big deal for us. Emma had always wanted to get married and children. Hearing all of this about Emma from her mother, it's gonna be even harder to break the news, Emma. Oh no, Emma, why? Miss Greenwood is never going to see that come to fruition for her daughter. Oopsies, looks like you're building Miss Greenwood's hopes for the future up to high. And it's all gonna come crashing right down. Such a good person you are, you sick fuck. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dancing around the earth, instead of telling her outright that Emma's dead. Oh my, what a sign we have here. Look, Miss Greenwood, I'm not here to talk about marriage. I'm here to talk about something more concerning. Oh. Well, sure it can be that bad. Yeah, about that. The versicle tell me that she's dead. Uh, yeah. And the worst option, you will tell her. Right? Uh, silence. Present with sense of blood curdling guilt, you must say shut. You let know that you probably should say something to stop Miss Greenwood from going on about the future, but... I'm sure that the bad news is nothing if we're not even saying it. So how about we get to pl the planning the wedding now? Emma has so many cousins that I know she'll love to see, and I know that they'd be sure to see Emma happy with you. You wonder how, how and why Miss Greenwood is going on about Emma potentially marrying you, especially after her own husband death. Oh, well, you look so uncomfortable. Am I coming across as a bit strong? I know, to you it's silly for me to be going on about wedding. Personally, though, I find it to be a lovely thing to focus my energy on, that's all. Well, there's now officially no way to tell her without feeling like I'm a stupid piece of shit. Emma's dead, Mr. Greenwood. Wow! Congratulations! Woohoo! For the wedding! Oh, it's not wedding, it's wed dead. Oh no! You know, I like you. I like dark jokes like that. Emma's not dead. She's alive and well. Emma's alive. Emma's alive. Emma's alive. Now, while I do, I love dark jokes. Please don't tell me that one again. Miss Greenwood, why would I joke about something like that? Like this. You get my blessing for marriage. I've always wanted my little Emma to marry a handsome young man like you. Besides, we both like that kind of humor. Emma must have, been, must have told you so. She is dead. She died just yesterday. And I'm the one investigating her death. That's why I came here, because you need to know about her. You hold back, breaking down to an I'm sorry fit. I told you not to tell the joke again. You already to marry her. Why else would you have flowers? The flowers that peep be back then. Oh no. Therefore you, taking this news is a horrible experience. Emma isn't dead. No subject came about this. Please forgive me for this. You pull out a photo of Emma's corpse and enable proof that Emma's dead. With the corpse, we found this. And Emma's been gone since yesterday, right? She hasn't returned home. No. This is all an Albert lie, right? It's all one of those lies that you can sell, right? You lie all the time, right? You're you're lying, right? You're lying, right? You are lying, uh, right? Right? Your covering lips tell her everything. Miss Greenwood throws up at you, hitting you with a shaky arm. First, my husband, now my baby. I didn't get to say goodbye to her. She left early yesterday and I was sleeping and didn't even get to see her face before she... she... Miss Greenwood tries to attack you, attack you or mine as she tries to hit you with her limp arms. You know that you can join her in crying. 
If you begin to break down too, it will then be very reassuring to her. She's dead because of you. You didn't protect her. And now you're here offering conversations that I'm supposed to take and be fine with. Why can't you people prevent this kind of stuff? Why do you bend over backwards for somebody who jakes it for just like my, my husband, like my baby? Did you get it? I have nothing now. They were everything and now they are gone. Why did it have to be my baby girl? Why? As much as you had comparing yourself to victims in this case, in this current moment you see a young child. A young child who does everything to appease both a dead father and mother who is dealing with it. You don't like admitting it, but you are not fully over it even after a decade. Ah. It's why you're here, sitting in this room, breaking news of Emma's death to her poor mother. After a better chunk of an hour, Mrs. Greenwood composed herself somehow. Over the course of that hour, all that you could do was stoically watch as she buried her face in your arms. Miss Greenwood sat her with despair in her voice. Oliver, why would someone kill her? That's why I'm trying to piece together. You know her so much better than I did, so I figured that you might be able to tell me. I I get why you might be reluctant to speak on a matter. I understand why you would be interested in helping me. When people die, our mind tends to erase all the, of the negativity surrounding them. No matter how significant their misdeeds, it's what humans do. Especially those close to the dead. You can only imagine the emotion that will run through Miss Greenwood if you attempt not to go to her to speak ill of Emma. Oliver, there's no one she, she knows who wants to kill her, let alone hurt her that horribly. The, her body was mangled so terribly I didn't even see her as Emma. That's why I believe this was a personal attack. How much money did Emma usually carry, carry around? Last time that Emma told me how much she had, she said that she had 128. What do you ask? Wait, what? It was 120, 123, right? Uh huh. Her body was found with 123, with $5 being spent on her barista job. Okay, so yeah, oh yeah, the barista job. So the perpetrator was still concerned with robbing Emma. In every robbery case, they have seen the victim was left penniless. Interesting. This one is... The, the diet soda is $5. This murder was personal, I'll bet. Judging by how much was done to her. So you're saying that the murder is someone we know? They definitely could be, but there's always a chance that this was the work of a serial killer. I... Sorry. I'm sorry, but I can't think of anyone close enough to us to do this. All of our family lives across the ocean, so we only see them every now and then. Maybe the nightboard or a classmate. I'm sorry. You and Mr. Greenwood hang your head slow in their full silence. The woman has so much on her mind right now, of course it will be it will be difficult for her to recall anything. If you weren't so insistent on solving this case as fast as possible, you wouldn't even be here. Wait. I I remember something. Emma mentioned it a few days ago. She said that she was walking home from university, but as she was passing by that big fashion store in a window reflection, she saw two tall men. That night she came home in incredibly late because of the detour she was taking. Thankfully, she was physically fine. That could be important. Did she tell you about anything about their physical appearance? It could be anything from a tattoo to a scar of some kind. Two person. The mother also met, met up with two person back then. Um, she said that one of the men smelled like body spray, and the other one was wearing a black hoodie with a brown jacket. I guess that doesn't narrow it down that much, sorry. Don't be, that information actually does help. Many cases have been solved using small details like that. Even if that information is caps around half the city population. I'm gonna need all the information I can get for this case. Well, that's good to know. And what would you say Emma's daily schedule was like? Well, her schedule yesterday was supposed to be work in Moonbills, go to Liberty University, go on lunch break, work at Moonbills, and then come home. But she never made it to the university. I got a call yesterday telling me that she wasn't present. Emma hated school, but she never skipped classes. Her record has been clean ever since she got there. And before you ask, I did call the police. I told them that I was scared for Emma's safety and that I wanted her home safe and sound. I, I filed a report and everything. I never slept last night because no one even updated me on her case. I've been trying to stay hopeful ever since I filled that report, but I didn't even get any confirmation for if they work in the case. You realize that you have been working instead of studying or lounging around. You could have gotten a hold of Emma's case before she died. 
Don't dwell on that now. Focus on getting information. Miss Greenwood, I understand if you don't trust me with this case, but I want you to know that I'll do anything to bring the perpetrator to justice. I hope you are not just lying to me. I can assure you that I'm not. Well, in that case, thank you. I know that you'll be able to do this. No matter how long it'll take to disappoint her, you have to solve this case. If not for your sake, then for Miss Greenwood's sake. You're not going to let Emma's death take over her life. Maybe, just maybe, if we let her death take over your life for a week or so, you can stop it from harming this woman so much. A little bit of pain to you will save her a lifetime of grieving, right? Maybe. This is the end of chapter. Would you like to save here? Heck yeah! Chapter 3, Confinement. Okay, we'll skip this. Uh huh, mother, huh? Okay, can I allot now? Thank you. Let's explore other options, shall we? Okay, this one is the resist one. Say no to mother, hell no. Uh, basically, the same, huh? Okay, the same startup tells Emma's dead. Okay, dark jokes. Does this say anything? I think it will be different. Huh. Confinement. Strange, it's the same thing. So, let's go back to the main menu, shall we? There's probably... I don't know, maybe there's something I miss, but I'm not really sure about that. Oh. Alright, so I tried to ask the developer of the game if there is anything that is like an ending or something in chapter 2 and apparently there is no ending in chapter 2. Which is, okay, cool, I, I think I already explored some of the major options. Unless I need to do minor options, then yes, it will probably be surprising to me that there is an ending. But I suspect none because, as I said, I already explored all the major options available in Chapter 2. But the choices that we made in Chapter 2 will have a m have changed in Chapter 3, which is interesting. Chapter 3, which are we going to explore soon. But anyway, yes, that's all for the Cardinal Park case this time. Chapter 2 has some interesting development with the Marina's mansion. I love that. Marisa? Ma Marisa, actually. Marisa's mansion. And some characters seems to be having a facade behind them. Like the mother, for example. Or Edward, for example, which is like, Edward, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mother? Are you okay? And... Who else it is? Eh, I guess the last one with the mother Greenwood is nice as well. Sad, sad mother. Anyway, yes, that's all for current Park case for now. I hope you enjoy it. See you later then in the next chapter. Bye bye.